You're watching semifinal number two here at the Swatch Women's Pro. Carissa Moore taking on Dimity Stoyle here in the early afternoon. You can see Carissa choosing that number 10 because she's always striving for excellence. And that'll be her number for the remainder of her career. Dimity Stoyle favored number 22. Best competitive year as she's grown in front of our eyes this season. As we watch a little wave pop up, remember we're still scoreless. Carissa Moore is going to control the start. She'll choose her backhand here. Getting down the line, attacking the oncoming section. Nice clean bottom turn. Snaps it off the top. Reaches off the lip again for a backside hack. Carves through the inside corner and she's on the board. Yeah, interesting right there. You know, Carissa deciding to go left on that one, but she's got a powerful backhand, so why not use it? You know, it's a peak situation. Slow lineup at the moment. There hasn't been a lot of waves. And Carissa deciding to go against the grain here with the wind coming at her. So it's going to have a little bit more bump on the face. But it's just, Carissa just unloads a couple of big turns right there, jamming in the lip. So nice little open there for Carissa. She's on the board. 28 minutes and 35 seconds remaining. Big sets coming throughout the back. Dimney's got to capitalize. She's got to make sure that, you know, it seems to me like it kind of might be one of those slower heats. And anticipating her start ever since she was getting wild cards about 14. Now Dimity checking out a lowers right-hander to get started. A lot of speed, trims it off the top. Forehand hook in the pocket, and she's out. So a two-turn combination to turn in her start, and that'll be compared to Chris's 5-3-3 opener. Yeah, I think Dimity's timing just a little bit off right there. You know, sometimes you can get a little bit overexcited with uh, the waiver here at lowers. Because it's so crowded, you don't get a lot of opportunity to really warm up. Dimity flying down the line here, kind of didn't quite connect right there. That was definitely better. Beautiful slashing turn and then decides to kick out, not forcing the issue. So 2.33 for Dimity. It's just a settler for her just to get that feet in the wax. Obviously, not a lot of nerves. It's the semi final for her. A big result. Can she go one better and make the finals here, Joe? So Dimity opens with a 2.33. Bot's noticing that out of rhythm timing just to start. She'll be chasing Chris some more for the next exchange. Chris, a 5.33 going to her backhand. Dimity Soil at the moment, a 2.33 start. And Chris some more just with a 5.33. Do you change your strategy at all when you got a heat like that and you know so much is on the line for the world title? No, I think it's just, uh, you got to just uh, fire on all cylinders, uh, Todd. This is uh, Dimity Stoyle now, running through the inside. Second scoring ride of the semifinal. Beautiful forehand wrap. Nice tight turn in the inside corner. Thanks, Todd and Pete, for that update. They're talking about DeSouza taking on Fanning in the Hurley Pro. Yep. And then this one went a little sleepy. Stoyle needing a 3-0-1 just to get the lead. Changing game plans. How often does that happen in a contest with Todd's question? Oh, almost every heat. <laughs> Let's have a look at Dimity's uh, wave here. I think Carissa had priority deciding to sit, sit this one out and wait. Nice slashing turn there from Dimini, just uh, gets caught behind the white water, but back on the open face. This is what we're looking forward to seeing from her. She's got herself back in the heat. Jenny needed a 3.01. Now Carissa Moore, big open face hook in Dimity's face. Wraps it on the inside. And plenty of room. Throw down another forehand carve. Into the inside, trims one off the top. The two-time world champ, Carissa Moore, gets out of there. Remember, she had a 5-3-3 before. She's improving on her total. Dimity also improving on that last exchange. Yeah, Dimity needing a 3.01, so she's probably going to get that, but then I think Carissa's going to get the lead back due to that 5-3-3 start. Let's have a look at Carissa's wave here, right in front of Dimity. Dimity watching this one very closely. Big sort of wraparound cutback. And again right there, so nothing too major at the beginning of this wave. Three sort of standard wraparound cutbacks, and then bangs it through the white water. Carissa decides to kick out of that. So another huge score there for Carissa. But she's got that two-wave total now to work with, Joe. Great to see what they can do under pressure with time against them. Scores drift again. Dimity turns in a 4.17. So Chris only needed a 1.17 to come back. Carissa will have the lead when we come back from break.
You know, the thing I like about Carissa, she doesn't show her A game unless she really has to. Here we go. Tammany Stoyle's going to take this wave. Needs a 7-8-3 for the lead. Full wrap for the women from the Sunshine Coast of Australia into a forehand carve. Tammany pushing that rail back into the pocket again out front. She'll run out of room. Now Carissa Moore getting underway. Roundhouse Cuddy draws another clean carve. Nice option just on that lone road cutback. Just fading the cutty real quick. This wave's really losing its power, but she'll still have enough room to hit it off the top before she kicks out. Yeah, Carissa looking to replace the 5.33. And Dimini, well, Dimini needs a massive score, 7.83. You know, you don't want to let Carissa get too far ahead, Joe. You don't want to let her build that confidence up because she can drop bombs on you. This is a good backup wave here for uh, for Dimity. This is a good little confidence builder as well. See her just getting that rhythm going, finding that pocket. Really tricky here at the moment. The wind is affecting the wave a little bit more as the afternoon comes around the corner. And that one there, really not really giving her that inside section. And this one here from Carissa, second wave of the set. I guarantee you Mike Parsons told her, look, try and get that second wave. Let that first one go. Push your opponent into that first one and then pick off the second one. You can see a lot cleaner on the face of the wave, easier to set your rail, easier to find that rhythm. Beautiful form and rhythm from Carissa Moore. She's achieved so many amazing things in her young career. It just feels like it's just getting underway. And it, and it knocked her out of the world title race. She's not going to let that happen again, let me tell you right now. This is Carissa on her way back out. Messy little whitewater star, but she'll clean it up with a vertical snap out front. Set up turn, but that one's staying really gutless and flat in the face. Her third wave is about to lock in, and she'll be improving on her 5.33 start. Stoyle's third wave of 5.43. You can see the difference from the panel. Carissa's top two, 7.6, 6.67. Dimity's top two, 4.17, and a 5.43. You know, you're, it's, I don't know, it's, it's just another heat, yes, but Unless you surfed in 100 semi-finals, it's, it's a semi-final. This is Carissa Moore. Has a ton of experience in the final series. She'll throw down the reverse. And then the next section will leave her behind. Chris has had that move for many years. This is Dimity Stoyle now. Big section. Hits it hard off the top. A tough inside section to climb, and she's down. Yeah, Dimity gun for broke there. Knew she had to. She had Carissa in the corner of her eye there, keeping a close eye on her. That first turn from Dimity was fantastic, but then kind of ran away from her a little bit. So Dimity's going to get back out. She's going to get priority again. Just over seven minutes to go. So far, so good. Three minutes remaining. Carissa with, with a pretty strong lead. There she goes again. Or just an easy little run to start. Just all setup work, keeping it smooth. Now she's going to go for something big. Layback hack, and she'll let go. But the ocean is looking flat. Dimity puts her head down as we're into the countdown. She'll turn in a great semi-final performance here at the Swatch Women's Pro. Had the 4.17 and a 5.43. Being on the back page of the Jeep leaderboard, it was a huge one just to break the slump of results. Now she'll have some rhythm heading into Portugal. And now, what does this mean for Carissa Moore? Now she has a chance to get another win this season to put some room between her and Courtney Conlon. 